Now, solution to engineering mechanics problem set 2.6, solution to 2.91. Uh, in 2.6, uh, we have been using the principle of uh, moment of a force. <coughs> Uh, that is, uh, if there is a force and you want to find out its a turning effect about a point, then the moment is the product of the force and the perpendicular distance of the force from the point where we are to find out the turning effect. Now, let us read, uh, read out the statement, two beams AB and DE. As you can look at in the original diagram, AB is a beam uh, and DE is also a beam. AB is pin jointed here, DE is pin jointed here and here. Uh, so, and both are supported, are supported as shown in the figure. Okay, find the mag magnitude of the reaction RE. What is the reaction force at RE? Uh, at the point E, the reaction is Re, and due to the force, P is equal to 890 Newton. This P is 890 Newton applied to this side, making angle 30 degree with the, with the beam AB, that is making 30 degree with the horizontal. <coughs> and P is applied at the point B. So, let us discuss. Uh, AB is a beam, DE is the second beam. Given the value of uh, the applied force P is equal to 890 Newton, uh, making angle 30 degree with the beam AB at point B, that is making 30 degree with the horizontal. So, as you can see, we will have a reaction force here, we will have a reaction force here, we will have a reaction force here also. Uh, at point C, where the beam AB and DE are supported, uh, let the reaction is equal to RC. RC is the reaction force at C. Now, if I produce the reaction force uh, and the uh, line of action of a P, uh, if you produce this reaction force here, RC, like this, it will meet the applied force P at this point, which I have redrawn in a different figure, and let that point is equal to F. So F is equal to, so F is equal to the point where the line of action of the reaction force RC at point C and P meet. Now, now, now is under, interesting. Now let us consider the beam, the first beam that is AB, which I have redrawn here. The applied force is to this side P, 890 Newton. The reaction force from here is RC to this side. They meet at this point F. Now, so the reaction at A should also pass through the same point F and should be directed from F to A. I will explain why it should be directed from F to A, why not from A to F, right? Uh, because, uh, now let me read out, then I will explain this. Consider the beam AB, the reaction at A, that is RA, must pass through the point F and pointing from F to A, that is RA, the reaction at A, the reaction RA at point A should be opposite to the resultant of RC and P. Because if you look here, uh, the applied force P is pointing to this side. The reaction force is pointing to this side, reaction at C. So the resultant of reaction force at C and, and P will be, if you construct a parallelogram, if you construct a parallelogram, it will be to this side. So, since it is in equilibrium, so the resultant, this resultant, this resultant of P and RC should be balanced by a force to this side. So, this is your RA. This point is equal to your F. 
so so that is the conclusion so reaction force r a at point a should be pointing in the direction f a in the direction f a <coughs> now it is also given in the original diagram this length is 1.22 meter this length is also 1.22 meter this length is also 1.22 meter therefore from point a to point b this length will be three times point three times 1.22 meters so so if you look at ab from a to b the length a to b will be 1.22 plus 1.22 plus 1.22 that is equal to three times 1.22 meter and from a to c and from a to c if you look at the original diagram from a to c from from here to here <coughs> will be 1.22 plus 1 point <coughs> two two, sorry that is 2 times 1.22 so from a to c will be 2 times 1.22 meter now <coughs> Now the contribution of moment of the reaction force R A about point A is zero because if you consider the moment of this force, reaction force R A at point A, it does not contribute because R A is passing through this point. Means R A does not have a perpendicular distance from the point A. Had R A been here, been here, then this should have been the perpendicular distance. Had R A been here, then this would have been perpendicular distance. Since R A, R A, the reaction force R A at point A is passing through the point, that is the line of action of R A doesn't have a perpendicular distance from point A. So, so this R A, the reaction force does not produce any turning effect about point A. So that is what I have said. Contribution of moment of R A about A is zero. Now, let us uh, split the applied force P, which is equal to 890 Newton, to rectangular components. Uh, this was your direction of a P. This was your direction of a P. Now, now, if you look here, uh, this is the direction of a P. So, and this angle is 30. So, this will be 30 vertically opposite. So, this will be your P times cos 30, this will be your P times sin 30. Now, if you look at, so instead of considering P, we can consider two of its components, rectangular components, that is P cos 30 and P sin 30. And again, if you visualize, you can visualize P cos 30, P cos 30. It's not from here, it's from here actually. P cos 30 is also passing through the point A is also passing through the point A. Means P cos 30 also does not have a perpendicular distance from the point A where we are about to find out the moment. So P cos 30, since this does not have a perpendicular distance from point A, so P cos 30 also does not produce any turning effect about point A. But P sin 30, this component, has a perpendicular distance from A that is equal to the length from A to B. So, P sin 30 will provide, will contribute some turning effect about point A and that will be equal to P sin 30 times this perpendicular distance AB. So, now <coughs> and RC and RC will also produce a turning effect about A because RC from its line of action has a perpendicular distance AC from point A and due to RC uh, the beam AB will try to will, will have a turning effect anticlockwise and due to P sin 30 the beam AB about point A will have a clockwise movement like this clockwise movement and since it is in equilibrium both the clockwise and anticlockwise movement should be equal so I have made them equal so sum of the moments at point A is equal to 0 that is <coughs> P sin 30 times the perpendicular distance. Uh, this is the perpendicular distance of P sin 30 from point A. And this is the perpendicular distance <coughs> of RC 
from point A. So both are equal. <coughs> now, <coughs> keep RC on one side, take all the terms to the right hand side. So this becomes P times sine 30 times 3 into 1.22 over 2 times 1.22. So that comes out to be 3 over 2 because sin 30 is 1 by 2, P is P and this cancels with this. <coughs> so 3 over 2, P times sin 30. <coughs> now if you put the value of a P, this becomes 2670 Newton. If you don't put the value of P, just keep it like that as P, then your reaction force at C, the same reaction force at C because becomes 3 by 2 times p sin 30, sin 30 is 1 over 2, so 3 over 4 times p, that is 3 divided by 4 is 0.75 times, 0.75 times p. The reaction force at C is equal to 75% uh, of the applied force P. Now, let us consider the second beam DE. Now, have a look at, uh, have a look at the original diagram. <coughs> The second beam, DE, supported here by a pin joint and here. And uh, there will be reaction force at point E also. Now, <coughs> now point E also. So, I have redrawn the diagram for you for the beam DE. Now, consider the beam DE, RC and RE. A, pass through G, uh, reaction force here. <coughs> Uh, uh, RC and RE from the point E, this point is E, RE is passing to this side, RC, uh, uh, here you might, uh, you might be surprised why you have taken RC is to this side, whereas in this case for the beam I have taken RC to this side. Action reactions <coughs> at the point C, at the point C, the reaction force, action reaction force for beam AB, it will be to this side and for beam DE, it will be to this side. So, that is, that is to be understood. So, the line of action of, uh, for the point, for the beam DE, RC is to this side. R is to this side, both they meet at point G. Therefore, the reaction from the point D should also pass through the same point and pointing from D to G. Why it should point from D to G? I have explained. I have explained uh, here. Now look, I have explained here. R C is to this side. Now, R E is to this side. So, the resultant of RC and RE using parallelogram law of vector addition will be to this side. Therefore, to balance this, that to balance the resultant of RE and RC, RD must point opposite to, opposite to this direction, that is in this direction. So, RD is pointing from D to G. Now, so RD must point from D to G, that is opposite to the direction of the resultant of RC and RE. Now, it is given in the original diagram, this angle is 60 degree. Here, here, uh, this is given, this angle is given as 60 degree. Now, at point E, at point E, how this angle is equal to 60 degree? Now, let us analyze that. It is given this angle is 60, this is your point E. If you drop a perpendicular, this is becomes 90, this is 60. So the remaining angle, this is 30. So this angle will be 30 being vertically opposite here to this side, RE is normal. So this angle will be 60. So RE makes angle 60 degree with the, this vertical line, with this vertical line. Now, <coughs> So, RE makes 60 degree with vertical. Now, let us take the moment of the forces about point D. 
about this point rd is passing through point d doesn't have a perpendicular distance from point d so its contribution to moment about point d is zero now rc has a perpendicular distance from d that is equal to from d to c and and uh, your rc so rc times this perpendicular distance uh, this perpendicular distance is equal to 1.22 you can look here uh, i am considering the moment of the force about point d c is here this distance from here to here is 1.22 so so rc times 1.22 will be re cos 30 now look since this is 60 uh, this will be your 30 degree so the component of re one component will be to this side uh, and one component will be to this side if you don't consider this angle if you only consider 60 then this component of re this component of re will be re will be re cos 60 and this component of re will be re sin 60 now instead of considering re i can consider its two components that is re cos 60 and re sin 60 re sin 60 the line of action of re sin 60 is pointing to this side that is passing through the point d so this will not have any moment about point d but re cos 60 from this point acting vertically up has a perpendicular distance from d that is equal to de so this will produce a turning effect about point d so <coughs> now so so considering so r e cos 60 so r e cos 60 times this perpendicular distance is is a anti clockwise moment about point d its contribution is not there because it is passing through the point then rc times this perpendicular distance about point d is a clockwise moment like this now its contribution is zero so i have made them equal so put rc which we previously calculated as 0.7 times p here then we get re is equal to rc times 1.22 cos 63 times 1.22 1.22 cancels so i am left with 0.7 times p over cos 60 times 3 that is equal to 0.5 p so since p is equal to 890 newton put the value of p here so this comes out to be 445 newton is the reaction force at the support e at the support e so the reaction here is found out as 445 uh, newton so thank you once again and uh, we will move on to more videos soon